today we're going to talk about topology, making topology to an NYU. We're basically going to learn about the Brouwer fixed point theorem. No, I can't spell Brouwer, that's why I wrote it as B. And it basically says that for any bounded space, uh, that is completely closed, which means it contains its entire boundary, and it can be enclosed within a finite disk, so not like a plane or an angle or anything else like that, uh, then any function, uh, or any function that acts on every point in the set, there will always be something known as a fixed point, i.e. where f of that point is just that point again. Now in an unbounded space, it's relatively easy to find a function that's not, uh, that doesn't have any fixed points. So, the plane is unbounded because no finite disk can contain the entire plane. So now, if we shift uh, every single point in the plane, one unit to the right, then no point returns to its original position. <laughs> Everything is moved in this direction, so it's impossible to have a fixed point. However, uh, we're going to do this on the simplest of uh, we're going to do this on the simplest of our bounded uh, closed sets. So this is what we call a disk. Now it can go anywhere from just a point in zero dimensions to a line in one dimension to a circle in two dimensions to a sphere in three dimensions, and technically beyond. Now, later in this class, we're going to prove it, uh, prove this theorem for all of these dimensions, and even ones beyond three dimensions, but for now, the only ones we can prove it for are, this doesn't exist, one dimension. Why? Well, let's see. So, imagine uh, uh, and this function has to be continuous, by the way. So imagine this function, f, which brings some point p in the set to another point inside the set, f of p. So let's say this is f of p. Then if we have some a point that's really close to p, that we can call q, then f of q should logically also be really close to f of p by the definition of continuity. So something like that. So now, let's say that uh, we have a new function, z, that maps some point in the set to some other point in the set. So what this basically does is z, z of p is we draw the line between p and f of p, and we extend it to hit the circle. That's g of p. And we take the line from q and extend it to hit f of q on the way. And then we have g of q. So logically, uh, g of every point uh, for all points in the set is inside the boundary of the set, of course. Uh, so, a g also appears to be continuous because it's just sort of an extension of f. So, g is continuous, right? But, g, uh, for all g of x, every output of the function g of x is on the boundary, is on the boundary of the set. But what's the boundary of the set for a one-dimensional circle? Draw the real line. A one-dimensional circle 
centered at the origin is just an interval going from negative 1 to 1, well, a unit circle at least. Doesn't really matter for our purposes, since we can just scale it up, scale it down, and translate it however we like. So then, the boundary is completely disjoint, as it's these two points, minus 1 and 1. So at some point, it has to cut between these two, but that can never happen because g is continuous. So by the intermediate value theorem, g cannot be continuous, but g is continuous. So that's how we can do it in one dimension. But we can't quite do it in two dimensions yet, since we have to actually prove that this is discontinuous. Because it appears that every point on the boundary is connected to every other point in the circle. So we have to talk, we have to seriously talk about the circles and the spheres and the whatevers, uh, our geometry in order to uh, figure out if G, this new novel function, is discontinuous or not. Oh yeah, and of course, uh, the non-existence of G implies the non-existence of F. And why is G drawing the line between P and F of P? Well, if there existed a fixed point where P is equal to F of P, you can't just draw a line with one point. We can only draw a line with two points involved. So, uh, <coughs> if the P is not equal to F of P for every single case, we should be able to draw this line for every single point in the set, which makes it completely general. So yeah, that's it. Thank you everybody for watching.